The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. This is the last frontier where rugged terrain provides riches of the world to both man and nature. This pristine landscape is sought out for abundant natural resources that are in high demand and provide vital habitat for waterfowl and wildlife. We travel into this snowy mountainside harbor to experience a trip of a lifetime for high adventure waterfowlers. Our journey puts us there just in time for the Valdez Alaska DU Chapters Fall Banquet. Ducks Unlimited is brought to you by Midway USA. DU host Jared Brown joins Alaska Wildfowl Adventures for a diver hunt on the Prince William Sound. The first snowstorm of the season has arrived, and hunting these rugged shores requires precise execution by the captains to even have a chance at the divers and sea ducks that stage here. This opportunity to hunt outside of Valdez, Alaska, chasing sea ducks and diver ducks has been one of those lifetime opportunities. Remarkable scenery, second to none. Rugged territory, it truly is the last frontier. Great experience, great hunting, always will remember this. Valdez, the northernmost ice-free port in North America, is located in southern Alaska along the western boreal forest that provides high-quality waterfowl habitat that produces a fall flight exceeding 4.6 million ducks. Come on, Mr. Jim. Okay. The opportunity to hunt with Jim West, the group manager over all the fundraising for DU and his energy and his excitement. And then you couple that with Brian and Tim, two very knowledgeable, very experienced outfitters up here. That makes it all worthwhile. What a great spot we got here, man. It's beautiful. I can't think of a prettier backdrop. How do these birds work in this spot? We're hunting an outgoing tide. So a lot of the mussel beds that are sitting right here are about to be exposed. So a lot of the harlequins and golden eyes that feed on those, they're gonna start moving in here and be able to get right in the low water, be able to pick them off the rocks real easy. And we're just gonna be sitting here waiting for them. What do you do when you down a bird here? Captain Brian here is gonna be in the tender boat and grabbing them as they go. So we don't have to run and try to grab a boat real quick. If we wound a bird or something, he'll be right on it. So we don't we lose anything. We need to give him the back. Yeah, we can. Back. <laughs> Up here under these real cold, harsh conditions, you really can't hunt a dog. The tides are so strong. I mean, that water movement is ferocious. That's why you need a tender boat. You actually need a hunting partner that's gonna be a part of that team to help retrieve down birds. This is That's exciting. Nice. Let's do it. Hey, Jim. Yeah. Got a bird about 10 o'clock, low yeah. on the deck. Okay. Be ready. Okay. Oh, he's looking like he's coming in. There you go. Take, Take him, Jim. Him. Nice shot. Well, that one worked yeah, really right just in. Just what we wanted. What I know about these divers they can lock in on decor spread. All right, guys, this one's coming in, looking good. Right there, it's coming in, it's coming in nice. Take him, Jerry. Oh, good. Nice shot. Right, yeah. my man. Woo, we're on the board again. Good shot, Jerry. God, I tell you what, that is good stuff. The two birds that came in, just like it is in the book, right into the golden eye decoys. Doesn't get much prettier than that. Yeah. And that's a full mature bird right there. That that is a trophy duck right there, huh? That is. That's what a lot of people come to Alaska for. You can get Barrow's golden eye, the Harlequins. You got to come here, basically Washington State, to get into these real thick. Mm -hmm. They get them in the Midwest a little bit, you know, Idaho and right. some where they get a lot of golden eyes. But for the most part, they're coastal birds. That is a beautiful bird. With the Barrow's golden eye on the board, will the Harlequins pass by before the heavy snowfall forces us back to the harbor?
Ducks Unlimited, brought to you by Midway USA, just about everything for hunting. And by Auto Vent Shade, lets fresh air in, keeps rain out. With snowfall increasing and the day quickly becoming a whiteout, Jim and Jared have both bagged their first trophies of the trip, Drake Barrow's Golden Eyes. As the temperature falls, the excitement for DU volunteerism has not, as Valdez area chairman Bill Connell rounds out the blind. I always enjoy hunting with locals, and Bill, born and raised up here in this great state of Alaska, and the excitement that he has as a DU volunteer. In fact, he only could join us for one hunt because he was gonna put on the banquet the next night. I could look over and see the excitement of Jim sharing a hunt with one of his truly volunteers that are working so hard for Ducks Unlimited. Jim, I know these are hard times, for, but uh, how are things going on the event side, volunteer side? You know, Jared, in, in spite of the economy, uh, the volunteers are, are really holding their own. Uh, they host around 4,500 events. And, you know, when you look at the gross proceeds uh, that are coming into our events, it's about $82 million. We have about 65,000 volunteers. Those volunteers are the backbone to Ducks Unlimited's grassroots effort. We do a fall and a spring banquet. It's a great thing to do. I mean, we've been involved in Ducks Unlimited for years. They're vital to us, and it's a family event. A lot of our committee volunteers are indeed waterfowlers, and it's their way to give something back. You know, they're willing to give their time and their energy to put on an event that generates those critical revenues that we can do so much with. I don't think people realize how large and the scope of what this organization is about. And we will protect this habitat from Alaska on down throughout all the lower 48 states and Mexico and our kids, 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 kids will be able to enjoy this great outdoors that you know we're taking part in right now. I've always wanted an opportunity to hunt in the snow. Unfortunately, it started snowing so heavily, we really had to pull the plug on the hunt. We couldn't even see the decoys that's about it for today, guys. We got a good little shoot in today, but with the snow moving in so thick, we're gonna go on the safe side and pick up and head in. Birds haven't been flying too heavy, and far out we are. We want to be safe and have a good ride in to end this good hunt. Well, let's go. I think we got hot food, hot showers, Sounds and cold great. beer waiting back at the camp. Because <laughs> it was an incredible setting. I mean, against that cliff, and the water was so beautiful, the wildlife, the sea life, everything. So it, I don't care if we didn't even see a duck, it was a good day. So I guess if you had to say you're disappointed, I was disappointed for about two seconds. Excellent. I mean, it was fantastic. We're southern hunters. Our typical weather conditions are Maybe a little rain, maybe in the 15, 30 degrees weather. It is snowing, and it's continued to snow since arrival. Yeah, I mean, one of the beautiful things about Valdez is we get snow. I mean, we get 400 inches of snow a year. Generally, in November, we get those few days that we get a foot of snow a day. When you're looking at a foot of snow a day, if you can see 100 yards, you're doing good. We got out to the docks. There was over 18 inches of snow on them. I was like, how in the world we're we gonna hunt in these conditions? Brian and Tim, two very knowledgeable outfitters up here, and that's what you need. Because we're hunting some very tough, harsh conditions. You want to know you have good equipment. Knowledgeable, trained captains that are guiding. Because uh, you could get into some serious life-threatening situations otherwise. Tell you what, Tim, not every day does a man get to, to come out and have an opportunity to shoot a Harlequin. To say I'm stoked and pumped is an understatement, my man. I didn't realize it, but wetlands 
make up about 50% of the surface area of Alaska. Now I understand the importance of this state to the habitat work that we're doing with Ducks Unlimited. Well, you know, one thing, Jim, a lot of people don't realize how important this Alaska region is and the Boreal Forest as far as it relates to the numbers of ducks they produce for like the fall flight. It's like 12 to 14 million birds. Well, the boreal forest is always considered the, the second duck factory. Well, Alaska essentially is the final frontier for waterfowl. Numbers of ducks in Alaska have really increased dramatically from numbers less than 2 million to numbers in excess of 5 million. Some species in particular have increased dramatically. Species like widgeon, like green-winged teal. Other species, scop and pintails notably, have declined in other portions of the continent, but have for the most part held their own in Alaska. Despite the fact that Alaska is essentially pristine in many respects, there are threats. Ducks Unlimited has played an important role with regard to waterfall conservation in Alaska. Not necessarily due to our traditional wetland restoration activities, but more on the science side with regard to mapping. Mapping that's been conducted by Ducks Unlimited will be used in the future for careful planning, for careful policy and decisions with regard to sustaining this pristine habitat for waterfowl in the U.S. What is DU doing conservation-wise right now in this boreal forest and interior region? That's a lot of questions that we get, especially at DU Banquets. You know, everyone says, well, what does Ducks Unlimited actually do in Alaska? Where's our money going? Because yeah, we're not really conserving land right now because there's I mean, as you see here, it's just vast and undeveloped a lot of it, where all the ducks are. But the problem is we don't know where those ducks are sitting a lot of times. So they're doing a lot of aerial surveys, a lot of ground surveys to learn where most of those 12, 14 million ducks are coming from and make sure that in the future, if there is development there, we're there ahead of time to protect it instead of trying to conserve after the fact. You know, those lessons that we've learned in the lower 48 is don't repeat it because the cost to restore is 10 times the cost of getting out in front of it. Conserving wetlands is Ducks Unlimited's core mission. By preserving existing wetlands before they need restoration, significant costs and impacts on nature are reduced. We didn't have an opportunity to take any harlequins, but we did see some. Yep, hey, yep that's a drake. There's literally like six drakes in there. And just the thought, that that little flock may come into the decoys. My heart started racing. It was like redlining, man. It was like, that bird truly is absolutely stunning. There's one good thing about hunting this morning, and that was Jim rolled one big Drake golden eye. We wanted Harlequin, but at least we didn't get a big goose head. Jim did a nice job, and that big golden eye folded up right in the spread. Oh, oh. Drake on the right. Okay. Nice shot. Good job. Nice okay. job, buddy. Just an instinctive quick shot. You know, look for the Drake and shot, and that's that. The common golden eye, like the Barrel's golden eye, is named for the brilliant yellow iris of their eyes. Both common and Barrel's golden eyes are also called whistlers because of the distinctive whistling sound their wings make in flight. On cold, windless days, the resonant whistling sound produced by the rapidly beating wings of a golden eye can often be heard a half mile away. As the snow and winds have laid down in the night, so has a solid layer of ice in the harbor. With ice brushing against the sides of the boat, Captains Tim Bouchard and Brian Rhodes navigate to a point where golden eyes have been spotted at low tide. This area is in close proximity to where the Exxon Valdez oil disaster happened over 20 years ago. And the long-term impacts on the marine and land wildlife are still being assessed. The effects of the spill will continue to be felt for many years as overall reductions in populations have been seen in various ocean animals. The sound is slowly recovering and some populations of marine animals, waterfowl, bottom fish and salmon are increasing, but others have never rebounded. These waters in this area is special. The marine life. Unbelievable. We have to keep these precious ecosystems intact. 
The tides played a big role in hunting setups. We wanted to be on a certain point, but the tides were too high, so we set up on the other side. We quickly realized that other spot was the X. Oh, they're gonna go into that other point, they're gonna make me ill, aren't they? And as soon as that water drew down low enough that we knew we could get a spot to put up the hunters and set up, we moved. These birds are only feeding in 10 or less feet of water. And when you get a 10 foot tide every day, you know, where they're feeding in the morning may not be, it'll be high and dry and a couple feet above water. So they're obviously not feeding there. So you gotta really pay attention where the tides are, what they're doing for the areas that you hunt. They're moving into areas when they've got, you know, three, four feet of water and the barrows can dive easy. They can get in there and feed on those mussels. So we may be able to hunt one area one day and not another day with the tide coming up it may not be a good spot. It kind of gives us natural rotation from our hunting spots and gives it a good area to work for for each different bird. Guys, got two on the deck over here. Take them. Nice, nice shot. shot. Watch that hand. She wants, she's gonna come back in. She's coming back. <laughs> These birds are very tough. And if you down a bird, you stay on it because if that head pops up, you gotta take that second shot. There's a single drink right there. Take him again. Got him. Right. Take him again. Still alive. Over the deck. Nice strike coming in. Take him, Brian. Good shot. Good job, nice. my man. Nice one, Brian. And I think Brian was more excited about taking pictures than even shouldering a gun. But his finished product was impressive. I mean, he had a couple birds that I had shot. You could literally see the shot and then the bird tumbling in the sequence. Now I can understand his excitement of shooting that camera. It's also every hunter has that, I know I hit that bird. But with Brian in the blind, having that camera, taking the shots, they missed them. The shot was two foot behind that duck. With a falling tide, will this buffet be exposed to the barrows who feed here before the sun falls and forces us in? Ducks Unlimited, brought to you by Midway USA, just about everything for hunting. And by Auto Vent Shade, lets fresh air in, keeps rain out. We have set up on our final day along the mouth of a creek with Captains Tim and Brian of Alaska Wildfowl Adventures. As the tide begins to fall, it exposes a mussel bed that we have strung decoys across, making this point a natural path for divers in these waters. As the tide lowers, it's go time, and the group hopes for some success before they head to town for the Valdez DU Banquet. Well, one thing's been unique about this hunt, Jim, is the amount of times we've had to move forward and, you know, get out to the water. About four times. <laughs> well, look at this. We started back where that snow was. Yes, sir. That little point. Mm-hmm. 30 yards back. Well, the water's dropped, what, probably 10 feet? It's getting there, yeah. A low tide's going to be coming up here in an hour. It'll be down 10 feet from this morning. Rocks we were sitting on was a big pile of food to them because it was all mussels. I mean, it was just packed in there, and that's what they're looking for. A little bit of duck food right there. Oh, okay. This is like corn to the barrows. Let's see. Well, I threw the little one. They don't even quite that big, but the little guys are those. Just like corn. Come in so here, that's what they're that coming the to, huh? Swallow Black, hole. What is it? Black corn? There you, you go. Swallow yeah. hole? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, this beautiful backdrop. It is. The sun's starting gorgeous. to hit the hillside over there, those mountains. All right, guys, we've got a nice drake coming in. Get ready. Take them, guys. Get them, take them. Nice. It's going, man. Go. Now we did it. Good job. Uh, you know, the hunting is secondary. I mean, all you have to do is look around, and it's just, it's just, it's amazing. There was a, a group of barrows that fully committed. They were coming right down into the ecos, fully committed up, and, and we made the decision, all of us, we were going to get up and take a nice drake out of that flock. We got up, and 
bunch of pies. There's a nice bunch coming. Look at him bombing in. Look, 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 Ready? look, look, look. Take him, take him. Wow. That was poor shooting at its finest right wow. there. We should all be ashamed of ourselves and go home. We pretty much launched everything that we had at him, and as we watched him fly away, I don't think there was one of us that was proud of that moment. I mean, you hear a lot of people say they came to Alaska and they never left. You know, you kind of experience Mother Nature in its best. I mean, the scenery is absolutely amazing. The people here are, you know, everyone treats you like family. Here you go, sing on the deck. Take them, guys. He's a lot. He, he's hit. He's dead. There's one coming right down. It's real low on the water. Oh, yeah, Jim. Get ready, Jim. You take this one. Take him. Take him. Nice shot. Nice shot. Oh, you see that thing flip? Good job, Great Jim. shot, man. Okay. got it. That's Drake out there on the deck. Take him. Nice shot. Tumble him. Nice shot, Jared. I love this game, baby. Take it, Jared. Take it, Jared. Jared's got him. Take him. Nice shot. Oh. Woo! Good job. I like it. Not only is this state big, the enormous amount of marine life, the wildlife, the wetlands, the waterfowl, everything's big. We ended today's haul with a beautiful specimens of about a dozen or more Borrow's Golden Eye. It was an incredible hunt, incredible time, incredible scenery. I can just keep going on down the line. Great place.